how can you tweak your keto diet to get more out of your brain? Okay. By now, you probably know that the ketogenic diet is powerful for cognitive function. Okay. It's one of the leading ways to really boost brain performance. That's why military forces are using it. That's why all kinds of government agencies are using it to heighten how we think. Okay. So it's, it's proven there. There's no exaggeration there. But I think what we need to do is we need to start looking at things slightly different. We need to understand that the body and the brain are much more closely connected than we give them credit for. We often think just in a cerebral sense. How can we increase our brain function? But we have to think about what the diet is doing. You see, let me give you an example. Serotonin, okay, the feel-good neurotransmitter, the neurotransmitter that allows you to feel good and just get that sense of well-being. Did you know that 95% of that is created in your gut? Okay, and it travels up to your brain as a neurotransmitter, okay? So the gut biome really harnesses a lot of power for our brain. Now, the other piece of the equation is looking at the other side of the spectrum, Parkinson's disease. Okay. It's theorized and somewhat proven that Parkinson's disease probably starts in the gut. Okay, it starts in the gut by certain proteins unfolding and ultimately traveling up the vagus nerve into the brain. So it could literally start in the gut. Now my point in saying all of this is the ketogenic diet alters our gut biome. Okay, our microbiota changes dramatically and that alone has a powerful effect on our brain from a genetic standpoint, from a disease prevention standpoint, and from all kinds of different standpoints. But let's talk about some ways that you could possibly have some fun with this. Ways that you can boost your brain performance, but also protect your brain from neurodegenerative diseases as well. Okay, that's important stuff. It may not be important to you now, but it's important as you get older. So let's pay attention. All right, I also wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button and hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. New videos literally every single day. So you should be coming back here every day so you can get your daily dose of education. Also, at the end of this video, please go ahead and check out Four Sigmatic. There's a link in the description for them. That way you can get your mushroom coffee that's gonna also heighten your cognitive function and give you a little bit of that mental and body boost that you need. So special discount, special pricing, link down below in the description. Super simple after you watch this video. Huge shout out to them. So let's start with what the ideal level of ketones are. Like, should you try your hardest to get your ketone levels high? It's a common question. And I talk about frequently in my other videos that you don't need to get your ketone levels high to burn fat and to lose weight, okay? But if you're trying to go for cognitive function and trying to boost just overall cognitive wherewithal but also prevent neurodegenerative disease, higher ketones probably are better. Now, one of the ways that we can justify this is when you look at the epileptic community, okay? The, the science community that's treating epilepsy with ketones, they require their patients to have high therapeutic levels of ketones, okay, north of three millimoles usually. And this is because they only see positive results with their epilepsy if their ketone levels are high. So what that tells us is clearly it's doing something within the brain, okay? Clearly something that is chilling out seizures and possibly tilting that GABA glutamate scale enough. We don't really know. The point is, is doing something in the brain that is very optimal. The other piece of the equation that we have to remember is this kind of linear equation is that ketones oxidize in lieu of glucose. So ketones compete with glucose. So if you have one brain and you have uh, cells using energy, if ketones are present, they're going to compete with glucose, which means the more ketones you have present, the less glucose ends up getting oxidized. Glucose, when it oxidizes in the brain, causes issues, okay? When it oxidizes in the brain, it causes reactive oxygen species. It is a raging bull in a china shop inside your brain because it's so toxic. I shouldn't even say toxic, but just, it's so full of just waste when it gets processed out of the brain. Ketones burn clean. So there was a study that was published in the journal Cerebral Blood Flow and Metabolism that took a look at this specifically. They took a look of patients that were on the keto diet for really just a few days, for four days, and they measured glucose oxidation and ketone oxidation. Okay, glucose oxidation went down 20% and ketone oxidation went up sixfold. Okay, so that shows that when we have more ketones, we start suppressing glucose oxidation, which means we have a cleaner burning fuel. It's going to make you think clearer, but more importantly, it's going to protect from neurodegenerative disease and any kind of decline, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, things like that. So the case in point there is yes, if that is your goal, reduce your protein intake, increase your fats, definitely. Increase your exercise so that you induce autophagy and you get this to work because it is powerful. The next thing I need you to do, and this is so important, is consume high amounts of DHA. And I 
really stress that you don't just get DHA from a supplement. Okay, it is okay and it will work, but DHA in a whole food form from sardines, from anchovies, from mackerel, from uh, any kind of fish, from roe, from even algal oil, okay, from algae if you're, if you're vegan or anything like that, what that does is that ends up being bound to phosphatidylcholine in a food form. Okay, supplement form is not bound to that phosphatidylcholine as much. So you don't get the whole effect, the bioavailability. 90% of the fats in our brain are DHA. We need to get the fats from DHA if we want good brain health. Now, one of the things that is common when you look at people with neurodegenerative diseases, their brains are usually low in omega-3s, in DHA. Common denominator there. So, one of the issues that we have to look at, and this is a little bit of a digression, a little bit of a niche, but if you know your genetics and you know that you have what's called the APOE4 allele, okay, it's a, it's a sort of a genetic, just, I don't wanna say defect, but it's, if you know your genes and you know that you are, uh, have the APOE4, that means that you have a slightly different metabolism of fats and lipids. And what that means is that you oxidize a ton of DHA so it doesn't actually get to your brain. So you should probably check this out, or you probably would know if you do have it, but there is a percentage of people that have it. What that means, you just need to consume even more, and it's even more important that you have the phosphatidylcholine bond form, okay? The simplicity of it is remember this acronym. Sardines, mackerel, anchovies, salmon, herring, okay? Smash, very, very simple with that. Okay, now let's move into this next piece, which is simple, but is making sure that whatever you do, you get enough sleep and try to combine it with fasting now and then. Meaning, try to go to sleep in a fasted state. Okay, fasting induces autophagy. That's a no-brainer. It induces autophagy because it helps cellular recycling. But sleep is where you actually get this to occur. Okay, sleep, it occurs naturally, but if you're asleep, you, you get a chance for the autophagy to have more powerful of an effect because you're asleep. The janitorial crew can come in when everyone leaves the office, right? Okay, so it's a simple way of just getting that. Now, additionally, with keto, you have what's called HCAR binding. So ketones can bind to HCAR. Again, basically induces some gene expression that makes it so that sleep becomes more powerful. So even if you get less sleep, if you're fasting and you're really focusing on getting consistent sleep, it can have a big benefit in autophagy and ultimately your brain. Now, studies have shown that we do actually have autophagy that occurs in the brain. Up until recently, we didn't realize that we could have autophagy and autophagosomes really having their effect in their brain but it does work like that. And we have to be fasting, we have to just, you know, eat uh, autophagy simulating foods. I'll save that topic for another video. This next one is a little bit uh, of a hypothesis, but it makes a lot of sense. And when you start looking at the APOE4 and you start looking at, again, that complex stuff, it really does make sense. That's trying to substitute some of your saturated fats for monounsaturated fats and some polyunsaturated fats. Why? Well, they generate into ketones easier, which is good for the brain, but also, there are a lot of studies that are showing that the Mediterranean diet is still one of the best when it comes down to mental health. So it's certainly not going to hurt you by subbing out some of the saturated fat. So if you're normally subbing or if you're normally reaching for some cheese as a snack, try reaching for some olives or something instead and get those monounsaturated fats. It's 100% not gonna hurt anything, but you have a better chance of A, creating a higher ketone content, B, getting the neuroprotective effects, and C, if you do have the APOE4 and we wanna go down that rabbit hole, it's gonna make it so that you can actually get this into the brain and have neuroprotective effects. Long story short, just trust me on that one. This next piece is adding curcumin or turmeric to everything. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you are after a neural boost, why wouldn't you? It's so beneficial, not only from a neuroinflammation standpoint, which again, we link just about every neurodegenerative disease to neuroinflammation. So yeah, it's gonna combat inflammation via the nuclear factor kappa V pathway and the NLRP3 inflammasome, tumor necrosis factor one alpha, all those different cytokines, pathways, signaling systems, everything. But where it's really interesting is when we actually look at sort of the gene expression side of things. Now, uh, my friend Nicholas Norwitz over at Oxford University He's uh, done some review articles on this stuff, and there's one particular thing known as WNT signaling that curcumin does. So curcumin triggers uh, WNT signaling. Then from there, it inhibits something known as GSK3 beta. And this GSK3 beta increases beta catenin, which from there ends up triggering specific gene expression, which allows us to again, have neuroprotective effects, but essentially grow new neurons, essentially give our body the ability to do that. It makes the brain a cleaner place, plain and simple. The next one is kind of a hack, okay? And this is more of a supplemental thing. 
If you've seen some of the research out there surrounding lithium, it's really fascinating. Okay, so lithium is used in pharmaceutical uh, settings for all kinds of uh, psychoses, right? So for any kind of mental disorders that are pretty significant. But what's interesting is now we're seeing that if you take them in really small doses, like literally a hundred times or even a thousand times less than what the pharmaceutical rate is, you can really still get a benefit, a strong benefit when it comes down to being neuroprotected. So there's a study that was published in the current Alzheimer's Research Journal, okay, it took a look at participants and it put them on a dose of lithium a thousand times less than the lowest pharmaceutical dose. And these patients had Alzheimer's disease and they had absolutely no more cognitive decline when they took lithium. So the point in saying that is if you're doing it as a nootropic or as a way to just protect your brain, you could really get away with taking like really low amounts. Now, lithium is something you can get on Amazon, you can get online like in five milligram tabs. So you can just do a little Google research and you know, use that as your, as your reference point for starting really small and seeing if you get some benefit out of it. Now, full disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I can't tell you to do something, but do your own due diligence on that because combined with the effects of keto, you might just have a really powerful brain tool here. Okay, you've got all the benefits of keto and fasting, on your brain, you know how to now tweak your keto fasting, you know how to add curcumin, you know how to do things. Adding lithium to the mix could just be the little hack that you need to really have your limitless pill, for lack of a better way of saying it. So as always, I appreciate you spending the time here on my channel. I appreciate you watching all my videos. So keep it locked in here and I'll see you tomorrow.